On April 4, 2020, with the sun casting a high piercing light in the sky, tragedy struck as Robbie Lawler's life was abruptly and violently cut short. This chilling incident unfolded outside a residence on Etna Drive in the Ardoin area of North Belfast. In a swift and methodical manner, a gunman targeted Lawler, leaving him with no chance to escape. As Lawler entered the hallway of the house, his assailant burst in through the back, catching him off guard. In a desperate attempt to flee, Lawler made a dash for the front door, but the relentless hail of bullets pierced his skull, causing him to collapse beside a garden gate fatally wounded. The motive behind this ruthless assassination and the identity of the perpetrator soon became subjects of intense speculation within the secretive realm of organized crime. In the shadowy underworld, few names commanded as much fear and respect among the citizens of Ireland as Robbie Lawler. Known as a truly chilling character, he was widely regarded as a psychopath whose presence evoked both disdain and fear, leaving a lasting mark on the worlds of organized crime and the communities of Dublin. Robbie Lawler's ominous journey unfolded from his early days as a minor delinquent, eventually transforming him into one of Ireland's most notorious gunmen. His story is a dark and harrowing tale marked by violence, vendettas and treacherous alliances, ultimately culminating in a shocking murder on the streets of Belfast. Originally hailing from Dublin, Lawler sought refuge in County Meath while becoming deeply enmeshed in the perilous realm of organized crime, particularly within the context of the infamous Drogheda feud. With a rap sheet boasting over a hundred convictions, he had become a familiar blip on law enforcement's radar. His ruthless reputation garnered him a plethora of adversaries. In December 2019, Lawler was released from prison, further adding to the enigma surrounding his life and actions. Lawler's life took a foreboding turn when he received a grave warning from law enforcement. The message was clear. His life was in imminent danger. However, these warnings, though dire, proved insufficient to shield him from the multitude of adversaries he had accumulated over the years. As the year 2020 progressed, the threats against Lawler intensified, casting a dark cloud over his existence. In search of safety, he made the fateful decision to escape to Northern Ireland. Little did he know that this seemingly wise move would ultimately lead to his tragic end. Lawler found refuge in an apartment located above a Tesco store on University Road in South Belfast unaware that this sanctuary would become a deadly trap. Days before the fatal incident on the evening of April 1st, three members of the notorious McCarthy Dundon gang arrived at Lawler's apartment. His friend, Quincy Bramble, approached Lawler's flat and deceptively lured him to the front door. Meanwhile, 17-year-old Levi Killeen, the son of the infamous gangster John Dundon, kept a watchful distance, staying out of sight. Lawler, unsuspecting, answered the door, unknowingly exposing his face to Killeen. According to later accounts presented to a judge, the encounter had been orchestrated to ensure that Robbie Lawler would be unmistakably identified at the moment the fatal blow was delivered. The implication was that Levi Killeen was the designated shooter. This theory gained credibility due to the existence of CCTV records, leading many to believe that Killeen and his associates were integral members of the hit team. However, the Police Service of Northern Ireland, PSNI, contended that they had thoroughly investigated the matter and found no concrete evidence linking the trio to Lawler's demise. Three days after this orchestrated encounter, Lawler met a gruesome end when he was ruthlessly executed. His murder has since become the focal point of extensive police investigations. Robbie Lawler was notorious for his violent and ruthless demeanor, resulting in him accumulating a multitude of enemies. His involvement in high-profile crimes, including several murders such as that of drug dealer Mark Byrne and David Fred Lynch, had earned him numerous foes. Among his adversaries were the factions embroiled in the deadly Drogheda feud, which had its origins in a drug gang from Drogheda, led by Owen Maguire. This feud had splintered into two warring factions. It is believed that Lawler had shot and gravely injured Maguire in 2018, further stoking the flames of enmity. In addition to the Drogheda feud, Lawler had also acquired a formidable enemy in Kulak mobster Mr. Big, particularly after he took the life of Mr. Big's right-hand man, Kenneth Finn, during the same year. This web of feuds and violence had contributed to Lawler's perilous existence. Shortly after being incarcerated for assaulting his ex-girlfriend and her new mother-in-law, Lawler's time behind bars proved to be anything but peaceful. Inside, he found himself in a collision course with yet another formidable adversary, Cornelius Price, who had aligned himself with Owen Maguire's faction. A particular anecdote circulated about Price extending an apparent olive branch to Lawler through a so-called Judas shake. This deceptive gesture seemed like an attempt to reconcile, but within mere hours, Lawler was brutally attacked. The Judas shake incident left Lawler seething with anger. Upon his release at the close of 2019, 
Lawler's life remained in serious jeopardy due to his involvement with major figures in the Drogheda feud. He was seeking vengeance for the murder of his brother-in-law, Richard Carberry, and held Price responsible for Carberry's killing. In January 2020, Lawler escalated the feud to a new level by orchestrating the brutal murder of teenager Keen Mulready Woods. Lawler was the prime suspect in this gruesome crime, sending shockwaves throughout the criminal underworld. The 17-year-old victim was lured to a house before being tragically killed and dismembered. This horrific act brought about a seismic shift in the ongoing feud and its consequences were profound. When Price was released from jail in February 2020, the situation escalated even further and his associates were livid about the brutality of Keene's death. The fallout from this incident reverberated widely, intensifying the enmity between the rival factions. During the peak of the Drogheda feud, Lawler sought refuge in the UK, vowing to exact revenge on his nemesis, Robbie Lawler, and bring about his demise. Yet with a multitude of adversaries, a pressing question loomed large. Who was responsible for Lawler's killing? Was it Cornelius Price, the Dundons, a shadowy hitman, or had Lawler fallen victim to a dark alliance driven by the widespread loathing for him? Regarding the Dundons, it wasn't solely this trio that attracted the authorities' scrutiny. While they were initially questioned, the Gardaí had observed a significant handover of cash to members of the McCarthy Dundon gang from Limerick shortly after Lawler's murder. The Gardaí suspected that this observed 50,000 euros payment was made in exchange for their role in luring Lawler to the scene. It became evident that there were strong connections between the Dundons and Cornelius Price. Subsequently, they were arrested in the UK for an extortion scheme that led to a 15-year prison sentence for Gear Dundon. However, it remains a possibility that additional individuals may have played a role in Lawler's murder, further deepening the mystery surrounding the case. As the investigation unfolded, another suspect emerged and was subsequently arrested and questioned. Warren Crossan, a known drug dealer, was suspected of having provided the getaway car that was used following the assassination of Robbie Lawler. Notably, Crossan was the son of the late dissident Republican chief Tommy Crossan. Just two months after Lawler's tragic demise, Warren Crossan was found murdered at his mother's residence in Crumlin. This grim incident appeared to be a retaliatory attack following Lawler's death. Remarkably, Crossan's name also surfaced in the extortion scheme orchestrated by Gur Dundon, in which money allegedly owed to Warren Crossan was a key motivating factor. The twist in this dark tale, however, stems from the fact that Crossan had already met his end before the extortion plot took place, perplexing investigators further due to the intricate connections involved. In another development, two more individuals came into the spotlight in December 2020. Patrick Tier, hailing from Belfast, and Adrian Holland from Derry, were charged in connection with Lawler's murder. Their arrests were based on license plate recognition and surveillance site analysis. Adrian Holland was the owner of the house on Etna Drive where the murder occurred, while Patrick Tier allegedly had a prior meeting with Sligo-based gangster Barry Young in a hotel just a couple of weeks prior to the fatal attack, adding another layer of complexity to this intricate web of connections. According to the police's findings, it was during this period that the murder was contracted on behalf of a powerful gangland alliance composed of figures like Mr. Big, Owen Maguire, and Cornelius Price. This sinister plot was meticulously orchestrated through intricate prison connections. The Gardaí now suspected that, in retaliation for the murder of Keen Mulready Woods, Price had paid a substantial sum exceeding 100,000 euros to arrange for Lawler's assassination. Price's cunning plan revolved around setting up Lawler with a rival group, creating the illusion of a hit job in Belfast. In this elaborate scheme, the intended target remained concealed, while the assassin lay in wait for Lawler to unwittingly walk into his own execution. This sinister plot ultimately led to Lawler's tragic demise, allowing Price to revel in the demise of his rival, captured in a chilling selfie video. As the investigations into the enigmatic death of Robbie Lawler continue, his presence continues to cast a long shadow over Ireland. His life and ultimate demise serve as a stark testament to the unforgiving nature of the criminal underworld, where loyalties are fickle and betrayals are all too common. While the mystery surrounding his murder persists, one thing remains unequivocal. Robbie Lawler's reign of terror may have come to an end, but his legacy will linger over Ireland for years to come. That concludes today's video. We're curious to hear your thoughts on today's topic, so please share them in the comments section. Additionally, if you found this video insightful, don't forget to show your support by liking it and subscribing to our channel for more engaging content in the future.